Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming City Com video. Let us discuss DirectX 12 for the Xbox One, as well as the PlayStation 4's API optimization and even OpenGL. Now, this stems from conversations from Naughty Dog's developers, as well as Ice Team and a few other industry figures besides. I've done this as an article as well because there are a lot of different references that I've used. And in addition to that, a bunch of different quotes. So it's going to be a lot easier just to reference everything in an article rather than add a hell of a lot of links to a YouTube. So um, let's begin things by saying a little bit of a preface that as a PC owner, or if you're a PC owner, DirectX 12's release next year is going to be really important for PC gaming, right? I think everyone agrees with that. Sure, right now we've got Mantle as a low-level API, and of course AMD are pushing that, but for many studios, they just want the familiarity that comes with DirectX, which of course entered DX12. So the lead programmer of Naughty Dog, of course, they are focused primarily on Sony's machine, um, but still, uh, Naughty Dog's lead programmer, his name is Christian Grilling, I'm hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, it's in the article anyway, along with links, as I said. Um, he said, regarding DirectX's current form, low-level access to the GPU really makes you understand why DirectX is uh, slow and why it's just in your way. Being able to unmap slash remap memory pages from virtual address spaces while maintaining its content is absolutely amazingly useful. Now, in addition to that, there have been comments from Sony's ICE team. Now, of course, they once again are primarily focused on the PS4, but this is with DirectX. Now, they say, and I quote, I was in the room, that session, this is aimed at GDC, by the way, 2014, and uh, you might remember that Microsoft did, did have this like conference with DirectX, and he said, and I quote, as I said, uh, that I was in the room, that sessions were pure marketing hyperbole. Later DX12 sessions at GDC, users were, were more realistic, slash interesting in my honest opinion. And, but so yeah, these GDC sessions are exactly what I had in mind when I wrote the tweets that I had linked to you earlier. Now, this was pointing to previous ones where he said, uh, this is caught, that looks awfully familiar. Uh, glad to see more um, graphics APIs are moving to the hardware. New patterns are emerging. And indeed, in addition to that, he didn't really want to comment 100% on performance because he said, well, I've not had that much experience with it. So I've not played around much with DirectX 12, therefore it's not really fair for me to judge and comment, which I suppose makes sense. So moving on from that, he says as he tries to find the relevant part, um, we have a comment from Ian Bell who is from Slightly Mad Studios. This once again is focused on DX12. This is primarily focused on the Xbox One version, but take it as you find it. We're hearing that up to a 30% performance increase is possible under certain circumstances. Xbox One should support it, as will PC, and it will make the Xbox faster and it's something worth caring for. Now remember, this is out of quote, but remember, Microsoft in their various PRE conferences, if you will. That's the technical name, don't you know? They'd basically said that it's going to be around 50% extra CPU performance. Now, most of this, those of you who have very keen sense of hearing, you might have just detected that my phone was ringing there because I was naughty and forgot to switch it off. But let's just ignore that and carry on in a professional manner which is so conducive to us. Anyway, um, so it's a very interesting possibility because you might have also remembered that there have been a series of rumors and comments from Camp Microsoft. These are official for the most part. And they've pointed out that they're exploring the possibility to increase the GPU 
uh, performance of the Xbox One. Well, not technically the GPU performance, that's actually rubbish, but they're going to basically be exploring the possibility of removing the 10% reserve that's for, well, system and connect functionality. So in effect, you're going to be able to get more GPU performance. That, that was worded better. So... It's still somewhat something up in the air at this point, and I'm not going to go super in-depth into this, but as far as I understand it, and as a brief summary, it's going to be, like, not for the user to do. So, you're not going to have to go into your dashboard, you know, go to system or whatever, and be like, okay, I want to do this and that. Or you don't have to be like, okay, well, if I've got Connect plugged in, it's not going to work, you know, the game's not going to boot or run at crappy frame rate or something like that, or not run at lower resolution. Um, and it's certainly not going to be a case where, oh, I've bought Connect, I'm screwed. It's going to be basically, as far as what we can understand, a system update. So, It'll download like any system update, it'll install onto your Xbox One, and then after that it will be down to developers. So for example, if a developer for Killerphone 3000 decides, hey, you know what, That's, we want this extra performance, we want a slightly better frame rate, or we need it for slightly better, um, I don't know, slightly better resolution, or better anti-aliasing, or whatever the hell they wish to spend it upon, then it will automatically disable connect. That's the basics of this anyway. Um, now, here's the other thing with DirectX 11. Multi-threading at the moment sucks with PC. I've already gone really in-depth into this and there are some um, links where I'll read the exact link text out. It's We've conducted an analysis on what it's about mm, just slightly above halfway down. The article. So if you want more information on DirectX 12, you can click on that because it also goes into this multi-threading thing. Um, because I don't want to be going over everything I've already covered. But uh, effectively, multi-threading on the PC sucks because most of the rendering work is spread to just a single core, which isn't ideal because you could become CPU bound very easily. It would be the equivalent of ask asking Jack, Tom, and Trevor to help you move a set of boxes and saying to Jack, hey, you see those nice 50 pound boxes over there? You can lift those yourself and, you know, you other guys, you can just carry those little one pound weakling boxes. And, you know, I'm sure that you'll all be done at the same time. You've got a hundred to move of each. So, you know, you just get on with that. And obviously the 50 pound boxes are going to take a hell of a lot longer to move, right? Of course, this is just an example. It's not exactly like that, but it gives you an idea of what I mean. Um, so basically, the main CPU thread becomes a lot more intensive, and the other threads, like the CPU usage basically of, like, say, core 0 would be, like, 100%, and the other two cores, or three cores, or whatever you've got in your system, might be, like, 30%, or 50%, or whatever. So the problem is, there's a bit of conflict data when it comes to the Xbox One version of this. Um, I've covered this already in, DX in the DX12 analysis, but uh, basically we're not sure how much this is going to help because as far as what we understand, the Xbox One version is a lower level than DX11. This is from Microsoft's own comments and developers' comments, but they've not gone super in-depth because of some reason no one knows why. The PS4, because I know you're curious about that, how does Sony fit in? Well, you've already got improved visuals when it comes to multi-platforms versus the Xbox One. So it's very easy to say, well, it's simply because of the additional GPU grunt and better memory structure. But that's not necessarily 100% true either. The PS4 has also two APIs, the GNM, which is the lowest access API available, basically it's pretty much the lowest level you can get, right, for the console. And then you've got, like, the wrapper, which is GNMX. So, GNMX is basically fairly similar to DirectX 11, from what we understand, um, in terms of how it controls the GPU. And it's great if, for example, you're just creating, like, an indie platform game, and you've got a small team, you don't need to be particularly proficient in the GNMX, um, or say GNM, you just could be like, well, the, 
the game's going to run, I mean, it's running on a toaster, for example, on in terms of specifications. It can run on a toaster, so who gives a crap if I'm missing certain performance from the GPU? It's it's going to be fine. It's, there's, no, there's no need to worry. So, in those cases, this is particularly true of, like, cross-platform games between, say, the PS3 and, let's say, the PS4, or, say, the Vita and the PS4. Most of those, I would imagine, are using the high-level API, because, quite frankly, there's just no need for them to really optimize it. I mean, what they're going to do if the game's already running at 1080p and 60 frames a second? Well, there's no point in optimizing it, right? But it's also good for larger studios who are basically equivalent of making a mock-up of how the engine's going to work. Oh, okay, uh, we're making, you know, exclusive game, just for example, for the system. Hey, you know what? Let's uh, just get something up and running on screen, right? We just want we just want to get the basic visuals. It's not going to be texture mapped, most likely. The lighting's going to be a piece of crap at the start. It's just going to be maybe, maybe using a bit of baked-in lighting on particular objects or whatever. There's going to be no reflections, and poly polygonal models are going to be extremely basic. We don't need the performance. We just want to see the bloody level playing on screen so we can get an idea of, is this mechanic fun? Right, because that's ultimately a really big thing, you know, does the cover mechanic work, that type of thing. In which case, at the start, the programmers are just, and, you know, designers are probably just working on a, a higher level API, because it just they just want to get something working, and then they can start transitioning as required. Um, now, it's interesting, because there was also a recent GDC event, um, well, the last GDC event, which was obviously the most, you know, recent. But regardless, and this was concerning uh, Sony. They're trying to push development community tools out, or should I say tools out to the development community. This was the Offering Tool the Framework, or ATF, uh, which is a .NET slash C Sharp type of derivative, which is all about Windows. And uh, I'm going to just read out a fraction of the quote because it's quite a big-ass uh, set of lines. Offering Tools Framework ATF is a set of the C Sharp slash .NET components for making games development tools on Windows. ATF has been in development for over eight years and has been used to make many custom tools such as as Naughty Dog's level editor, shader editor, and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read it out, um, because it gets kind of lengthy. But uh, anyway, it's marketing speak, but effectively, you know, shiny and happy times. Now, okay, what about C Sharp? Uh, sorry, C Sharp. I've got C Sharp on the brain, because I've been doing, I've been actually learning it myself. Um, what about OpenGL? Because that's the other elephant in the room. We've got um, Mantle which we've briefly discussed. We've got DirectX, of course, which we've spoken quite a bit about. We've got um, the other, you know, the PlayStation ones, and now we've got OpenGL. So it's broken, apparently, claims Joshua uh, Barzak. I'm hopefully I'm horrible pronouncing names. Um, while someone else on a blog, which is, I'm going to just completely and utterly butcher this poor man's name, but I'm going to give it an attempt anyway. You see, I, I understand, like, how memory systems work, I can tell you how a CPU works, and I can tell you, you know, nauseating detail about compute. Unfortunately, people's names, I'm not so good with them. Anyway, everyone needs a weak point, right? I'm sure people don't really require me to pronounce their name correctly, right? Anyway, um, Aris... Uh, Prank FCS, hopefully. Anyway, I've got a link to his blog anyway, so I'm not, uh, you know, miscrediting him or anything like that. But uh, it's in the article, it's got a link to his blog saying his recent blog post. Anyway, he says that it does have issues. He's admitted this, but he doesn't really understand why so many people are basically standing over OpenGL and every time it has a happy fun moment, someone smacks it on the hammer and says, No, you're being bad. You go to your room. And um, a lot of the issues, he said, you know, it has some problems that are being worked out, but he doesn't really understand it. I mean, I think it was open, is it 4.3? Is it 4.3? 4. Point, it's 4. Point, it's 4 point something. I think it was 4.3 added compute shaders and stuff like that. I honestly, I'm 
tired, which isn't helping. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 4.3 or 4.2, something along those. And the compute shaders, which is a really big thing, obviously. Uh, particularly now for modern day GPUs. We all know just how they're kind of progressing. So anyway, um, that's just about it. I think that pretty much covers everything. Hopefully you guys are still awake and conscious at the end of the video. And uh, yeah, so anyway, as I said, if you want more info, you can click on the article. And I would appreciate ye old comment and ye old thumbs up, because it would make me a happy camper. You would see a, f a happy face and stuff. Anyway, I'm going to get going. I'm in one of those really weird moods, as you can tell. I think it was because I basically spent so much of yesterday with watchdogs, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say when you've seen a cutscene 50 billion times. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care. Oh, and oh, actually, I forgot to mention, the analysis for the frame rate and stuff is coming. I've got everything recorded, and I've already about halfway through, and the PC stuff is coming as well. I've got all the console stuff, I've got the articles kind of started, and I just need the PC footage, and then we're good. They're golden, we're sorted out, we're, we're happy. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Take care, and bye for now.